Hi everyone, Tyler from Quixel here. Last year, we gave you a sneak peek into our Bridge 2020 release, which was set to completely revamp the Megascan's browsing experience. Today, we're releasing our first 2020 update, and in this video, I'll give you an extensive walkthrough of this update. Now, this walkthrough is going to be a rather lengthy one, so to help, I've added timestamps in the description below in case you want to quickly jump between chapters. Before we dive deep into the topic at hand, I wanted to briefly talk about the concept of a software like Bridge. When looking at how content management is typically done around the industry, we've noticed that most larger projects within video games, VFX, ArcViz, and cinematic studios are utilizing some sort of proprietary content library system to help them sort through all of their assets. Unfortunately, those tools are not available to everyone and they're often restrictive to managing content for one specific project or software, even expensive. We wanted to solve this problem with a tool that would help you not only organize your assets, but also connect them to your favorite 3D software through an effortless one-click process. It's with these problems and solutions in mind that Quixel Bridge was created. At its core, Bridge was originally made to handle Megascan's large asset library, but then we quickly realized that it could be used for so much more than that. When thinking about what content management for artists really comes down to, we learned that it involves a few key but simple features. One, it has to be a simple and organized structured program. Two, it has to be easy to use, no complicated things to figure out. Three, it has to have the ability to preview your content to make sure it's what you want before you decide to use it. And four, it has to have great connectivity and compatibility with third-party software such as Unreal Engine 4. Today's focus will be to give you an extensive guide into Bridge 2020 and how you can fully leverage its features to get the most out of it. And did I mention that it's free? Yes, Bridge is completely free and open to use for all your content. So sit tight and let's get started. First things first, you need to download the latest version of Bridge by easily going to quixel.com and then you need to navigate up here to the top menu where it says products and then go down and click on Bridge. And then right in the middle here, all you have to do is just click download Bridge. Then once you have Bridge downloaded and installed, you will be greeted by a dialog box similar to this one right here where you'll need to establish the library paths location on your system, which is this bar option right here. This is the directory that will be home to all of your downloaded mega scans and custom assets. Be sure to pick a location on your hard drive or perhaps a second hard drive that has plenty of dedicated free space for your assets. Asset libraries can grow very quickly, so it is important to choose a location that has enough space. Because if you're like me, every asset is tempting to click and download, and I've found myself doing that a time or two. And don't worry, you can change this location at any time by bringing up the settings window again. All you have to do is go up here to the top left menu, click edit, and the first option you see here is settings. And before we get started, if you haven't already done so, let's go to the top right up here where it says sign in and make sure that we have logged in. Here you have two options. You can sign in with your Quixel account, or if you are an Unreal Engine 4 user, you can sign in here with your Epic Games account. I would like to note that with the Epic Games account, all Unreal Engine users have access to the plethora of assets from the Megascans library for free. After you've set up your library path and signed in, you will now be directed to Bridge's homepage where you can easily discover the latest and greatest content in the Megascans library. The homepage here in the middle is an area you can also think of as a discovery page. Here you can explore and discover content in a flexible way. It is structured into categories to help you easily navigate through the library. It is also a great area to discover inspiration about your next project. For example, the homepage will have some sections here at the very top, almost kind of like a header, to give you a star into some of the latest things that are on our library. And if we were to keep scrolling down here on this page, we can see that there's a category for the latest surfaces that are being uploaded, the latest models, and latest plants, as well as the latest collections. And we'll get to collections just in a little bit. There's also asset types, so you can click on each one of these to filter between what's a 3D asset, a surface, displacement, or even brushes. 
Scrolling on down, there's even a category for trending assets. So some of our most popular assets that are being downloaded by users, you can see that right here in the scroll bar. And if we continue scrolling down, we'll start to see the location of the traditional library that you're probably used to. This will be the start where you can see all of the assets in the library, starting with the latest ones that are uploaded. Each area on the homepage here is able to direct you to a sub page, so to speak. So for example, if we scroll here to the top under the featured content, let's go ahead and click the abandoned factor here. And with that, the abandoned factory also has its own header to describe exactly what this collection is. And you can see all of the assets in the asset library window that are within this collection. And by collection, you will see here on the left toolbar here that since we selected the abandoned factory in the home page, that the organization here in the left toolbar has dynamically changed to what we selected. Let's break away from our main browser here and dive into the left toolbar a bit further, or as I'd like to refer to it as the organizer. So here in the left toolbar, we see that we have the home page selected and it's broken down these other categories here based on what we're wanting to look for. These categories are the same ones that you can see down here if I scroll down. Right here under asset types, we have 3D all the way to brushes. If we were to say click on surfaces, then a sub list here to further break down surfaces is also displayed. At the same time, you see here in our main window that it has also categorized those into the same categories. We can then further refine our search by say, let's go ahead and click bark. And after we clicked bark, it has even further categorized into a subcategory of bark, as well as it has broken it down in the left toolbar here. So the search between the main library window here and the left toolbar are both dynamic together and they all adjust. This whole process of searching for different assets through different categories like this has been greatly improved since the previous version of Bridge. So to find exactly what you're looking for just makes sense. The next tab on our list is the collections tab. Now you'll probably be a little familiar with the collections tab as we've had this before, but you haven't seen it like this. We've completely revamped how the collections categorizations work. As you can see here in the main library window, the main collections homepage is very similar to the main homepage. We have the featured content here at the very top, and if we scroll down, we can see that we have broken down collections into some further categories. For example, we have the environment, essential, arc viz, community, and tutorial. So instead of just listing the collections in order the way we did before, we've broken it down into ways where you could find what you're looking for in a much more intuitive way. We also have a new category called essentials. Now essentials are going to be all the collection types that focus on a more specific type of item. For example, here in our middle bar here, you can see that if you want to see all of the asphalt items, then you would want to click on the essential asphalts and see all the types of asphalt that we've handpicked. And just like in the home page, if you want to sort through all of the different types of essential collections we have, you can either click the right arrow here and load more different collections and see a little preview panel of what that collection consists of. Or you can just simply go to the left toolbar like we showed case just a second ago, click that, and it'll break down all of the essential collections in list form here or in its own home page like we've been used to. The next three sections we have are the Archivist, Community, and Tutorial Collections. So the Archivist collections tie to anything architectural related. The Community Collections here all consist of someone in the community that has made a really nice scene and that scene needed to be featured in its own collection. And lastly, the tutorial collections here are all the collections from any of our previous tutorials. We felt that this was a great category of collections to share with you guys because a lot of people really want to work with the assets that we've used in all of our previous tutorials. The next tab we have is the free tab. Now the free tab is going to be the area where all of the assets that are on the Mega Skins library are available to anyone for free who has a Quixel account. Now I mentioned before that if you're an Unreal Engine 4 user that all of the assets in the entire library are completely free. 
The next tab we have is the acquired tab. Now the acquired tab is all of the assets that are, are part of your Quixel account, but not necessarily the assets that you have downloaded. For example, if I were to go to the surface area here, which again, I can always choose surfaces here, and then I scroll down and I look at all the latest assets that I have on my account. So this first asset right here has this little green check mark by in the top left of the tile. This asset here has a blue check mark in the top left. So if there's a green check mark on any asset in the entire library, that means that that asset is acquired and is part of your account. If there is a blue check mark part of it, then that means that the asset is not only acquired on your account, but it is downloaded onto your local library. If we want to acquire a new asset for our account or download a new asset, we simply need to just go to that asset in the library window. So let's go ahead and just for an example, go to home. Let's select surfaces and then let's just select antique. And then I'm going to just pick one of the trending assets here and let's hover over this castle wall. You can see that there is no check mark of any kind in the top left, which means I don't have it on my local hard drive, nor is it part of my account. But in the top right, there's this green down arrow icon and that's download. If we click this, then this asset is automatically added to our account here, as you can see with the green icon. And from what we've learned, if once this finishes downloading, this icon will change to blue, saying that it is part of our local library on our machine. The next thing I want to point out when you have your mouse hovering over an individual asset here is not only that it says what the asset is named, but there is a heart icon in the bottom right of the tile. If we were to hover over this, it'll say favorite. Let's go ahead and click this. And now we have favorited this asset, which you can see here it is displaying in a full red heart. When you favorite an asset, it will appear in the favorites tab on the left toolbar right down here. Let's go ahead and click favorites. And then right here at the very top under all assets, it has shown that the castle wall that we had just downloaded is part of our favorites category. The last tab I want to discuss in the left toolbar is the local tab. Now the local tab is broken down into three subcategories. We have the mega scans category, the mixes category and external. The mega scans category is the location where all of your downloaded assets from the mega scans library will be sorted through and organized. While the mixes category here is actually where all of the content that you've made from Quixel Mixer and exported to your library will appear right here. So it is a really quick way to see and organize all of your custom mixes from Quixel Mixer. And lastly, the external tab is where all of your custom assets that you've imported into Bridge will appear. All right, so aside from the library selection options on the left toolbar method, there is one other method that is rather a more intuitive and straightforward approach to easily finding the content you want. Quite fun actually to use. So right here at the very top, we have this search bar. Now this search bar lets you dynamically search anything that you want in the library and it'll help you find it. For example, if I type in the word wood, you can see right off that the smart search helps bring up some suggested content as well as some places where wood may feature in some collections. Although these are clickable links to places we can go, I'm instead just going to make sure that I press enter on our wood here at the very top. You can now see that it has adjusted the library window here to showcase everything that resembles the wood search that we've typed in. Let's take our search a bit further before we click on anything here because we can keep adding different characters characteristics to the search bar. Let's now just type in flooring and let's take this just a bit further. Let's say that I want this wood flooring to be walnut. So I'm going to type in walnut and press enter. And then with just a few simple keystrokes, I have filtered wood, flooring and walnut. And now all of the types of walnut floors that I could ever want that's part of the Megaskins library is featured right here on the home page. Now let's look at another way of editing our results. I'm just going to exit out of floors and walnut so that just wood is being displayed in our search bar. So another way to break down our search results here is this filter bar right here where we have five different types of categorization. So for example, say I want to go to all types and I want to filter all of the wood results to be just surfaces. Then let's go to the all states drop down menu here and let's view all the wood that is damaged. Then let's go to the all environments tab 
and I want to look at all of the damaged wood that's part of some sort of industrial site. So let's click on the industrial environment here. And if you haven't noticed already, the environments are some of the same collection types that you see in the environments collections under the collection section. I'm gonna go ahead and select industrial. And this is some great results, but I want to further refine our results into one more characteristic. I want to go to the colors drop down menu here, and I want to look at all of our search results, but I want to look at just the brown ones. And here you go. It has found two assets that meet all the characteristics that I have filtered through. This is exactly what I'm looking for, the dirty wooden planks. So far, we've only been showcasing one asset at a time, but we can actually select multiple assets at a time to view. Now, if we were to click on a single asset here in the middle, this tree stump, you will see that since we clicked on it, not only does a preview tab here to the right pop out, which we'll get to in just a minute, but the asset is highlighted in blue to let you know that you've selected it. So if you want to select more than one, all you have to do is hold down control and click on another asset. When you do this, the panel to the right updates and it lists all the assets that you have selected in a menu here. You can see that one of the assets I have actually already acquired on my account and one of them I have not. Let's go ahead and select a couple more assets to explain this a bit further. So now I have five different assets selected here. Again, one of which is already on my account and four of which are not. Additionally, each asset is listed with its point cost. And then at the very bottom is a grand total of those point costs. Again, if you're an Unreal Engine 4 user, these points don't mean much to you as these assets will be free anyway. And then to add these to my account or to download them in the bottom left here, I simply just download the four assets. I click that and you can see each asset is automatically added to my account with a green check mark as well as a download progress bar is appearing for the asset that is currently being downloaded. Now that we've covered some of the key features to Bridges content management layout, let's look at how we can preview individual assets before we make a decision to either acquire it, download it, or export it to another application. Let's scroll down and select something that's not part of our library already. I'm gonna select this Mossy Rocks set here. And then once we have this asset selected, the panel to the right pops out to give us some information about the asset that we have selected. You can see it the preview tab here at the top has the preview image. It also has the name of the asset, the asset cost, and let's just go ahead and just add it to our favorites again here by selecting the heart icon right here. So as mentioned, we have the preview window right here. And then in the top left, we can choose how we want that window to be displayed. Right now, we just have it under the base preview, but we could also look at the different maps. We can see the albedo or move over and see the displacement, a fuzz map, a normal map, and a roughest map. We can also select the 3D view here. We can zoom in and out. We can left click on the mouse and hold and drag it around to move our asset around. If we want to see the different texture maps on this, then there is a new drop down menu that pops over here. And then we can select any different texture to see how it displays on the asset. And this preview is a tad bit small, but if we want to see this larger, there is a full screen icon here in the bottom right of this window. And then that further brings us to the full screen version of the 3D window. We can pan around just like we did before with the left mouse button. And if we hold down on the shift key and then drag our mouse around, we can shift the lighting around our source. Also, if we hold down on the control key and then left click and drag our asset around, we can then move our asset around orthographically around the scene. One thing to note is that since this asset is not a downloaded asset on my local hard drive, the texture size that's being displayed on the asset as well as some of the view options here are limited. And now that we have the 3D view of an asset that's downloaded on our local machine, we have a few additional things that we can do. We can one, zoom in really close to our asset. We can also change the texture size that's being displayed on the asset. So right now what's being displayed is a 1K texture, but let's go ahead and jump up to see what a 4K texture looks like. And you can see right off, there is an astronomical amount of more detail that we can see on the asset. Additionally, we can see what the asset looks like with different scaled meshes by changing the LOD. 
So if we wanted to say, look at LOD5, you could see that the mesh to the asset has changed just a little bit. Let's go to the top drop down menu here and then select wireframe so that we can see what's going on a bit further. Right here, you can see the wireframe of the mesh at LOD5, but if we change that back to LOD0, you can see now that the subdivisions of the mesh have gotten ever so much more dense. This is just a great way to preview your assets prior to choosing which ones you want to export to a scene. The next bit of information I wanna showcase on the tab here is this midsection right here under the asset info tab. We have something that's called scale, open, or assembly. This is just some quick information to pretty much explain to you what kind of asset this is and how it relates to the human scale. As you can see, the scale icon here showcases pretty much how this asset would be portrayed next to a human figure. If we were to select this aspen tree trunk here next to us, you can see that the scale has changed quite significantly to say that this is much larger than a human being. The open icon here pretty much says that the mesh of the asset has an opening somewhere. Specifically for this particular asset, the bottom of the mesh that you see here is completely open and is not closed. If we wanted to see a closed asset, let's select these rocks right here, and you can see that the icon has now changed to closed, which means that the mesh on all sides of the 3D asset is completely closed all the way around. So this midsection here is just some quick information to help you understand the form and scale of this asset. And the next bit in this area that I want to discuss is the similar assets. So we can select any of these assets here, or we can select the view all text here. So that'll pretty much just filter through all the content in the Megascans library and display assets that are very similar in nature to the asset that you have previously selected. So the next area in the asset panel I want to discuss is the download settings tab. This tab is where we can customize all of the settings before we decide to download this asset. We get choices of what texture resolution we want between 2, 4, and 8K. We also get to choose what kind of material preset we want. Right now it's set for Unreal Engine 4, but depending on what engine you're exporting to may depend on one of the presets you want to select. And then we also get a choice of what type of mesh format. The standard here is FBX, but you get an option to select OBJ or ABC type formats. In addition to the mesh format, we also get to choose which LODs we want to download. Sometimes you don't really want all of them. You just want a, a couple depending on what type of scene you're making. Or if you're wanting to do a really intense scene, you just want the highest one with the most dense mesh. You also have some more options here on the right, such as multiple albedos or multiple normals, which basically means you'll download a separate albedo and normal map for each and every one of these LODs instead of the same map being shared across the board. And speaking of maps, the last area in the downloads tab is where you can select or deselect any of the maps that you wanted downloaded with the asset. You can see that the Unreal Engine 4 preset has selected these specific maps for me to download, but I can always add something like the bump or the gloss map to my download. And when I did that, you can see the material preset automatically changes to custom. Another thing to note is that if you don't want to have to mess with these settings each and every time you download an asset, that's okay. If we go down here to the bottom of this panel and select global download settings, you then get the option to change the download settings globally to all the assets depending on the asset type. I have surfaces selected here, but I'm downloading a 3D model, so let's select 3D model. And then you see our settings here are pretty much exactly the same as in the download settings tab for our asset. But whatever we change these settings to will be the default for all the assets for 3D models. I just want to change our material preset here to be Unreal Engine 4. And you can see the map download settings here have changed to fit that. And all I'm going to do now is select exit. And since I just changed the global download settings, automatically the download settings for our asset here have been updated to reflect the global download settings. I would recommend to figure out the global download settings first. That way when you're in the library window here, you can simply just select the download icon as you go through the library and quickly download them on the whim. Let's go ahead and click the download button at the very bottom of our panel here.
So after we've clicked download, we actually can see a download icon has appeared up here in the top right. If we click this, we can actually see a live progress bar of our asset being downloaded. In addition, we have a pause and cancel icon right here to the right. If I go ahead and pause it, then we've already paused the download. But to resume download, we can just simply hit the download icon right here and it'll pick up the download exactly where we left off. Also, we could cancel all the items or clear all the items altogether. This is your download manager where even if you have multiple assets being downloaded at the same time, you can see all of their progress happen at one instance. So now that we have this asset downloaded, you can see a new tab in the asset panel has popped up. It's called the export settings tab. Let's go ahead and click this. And this tab is the settings to how you want this asset to be exported to any other application such as Unreal Engine 4. And just like with the download settings, we get the same export settings options here at the top where we can specify the resolution, the texture format, the mesh format, and which mesh LOD we want to export to our engine. To choose which engine you want to export to, in this myth section, we can specify in this drop down menu here which third party engine we want to export to. For this example, I'm just going to make sure that the Unreal Engine is the editor that we're going to be exporting to. And then this drop down box right below is where I can specify the engine version. I'm just going to make sure that the latest one is selected. And the next thing we need to do is we need to install this plugin integration. And to do that, we need to specify where this plugin is going to be installed to. So to do that, we need to go to the select folder link here. And then we're going to navigate to your programs, the Epic Games folder, and then you're going to click on the engine version that you're wanting to install it to and make sure that the folder you select is the same version as the engine version that you're planning to export to. And then you're going to go to the engine folder and then we're going to select the plugins folder and choose select folder from here. And then you can see that it has the link here and uh, got a notification in the top right that the Unreal plugin 5.0 has installed successfully. And if you need help installing any of the plugin integrations, just select this little question icon here, and then you can look through the documentation guide on how to install that specific plugin integration. At this point, we don't need to do anything further, but if you want to export this asset to a specific folder location or specific project location that you have, you can specify that here under project location. Just like in the download settings tab, in the export settings tab, we have a global export settings option here. If we click that and then we go to 3D models, we can then further specify all of the standard settings to globally export any of the assets in the Megascans library. Then there's also the advanced settings, which this helps you specify any type of special file formatting that you want to rename all of the exported maps, or you can customize map packs where you can package multiple maps to a single texture. We're not going to cover this today, but if you need more help in achieving this, just hit the little question icon here and it'll bring up the Quixel Bridge 2020 documentations to the exact location in the documentation where it'll guide you through the process to these steps. And then before we click the export button here, let's go ahead and make sure we have an Unreal Engine for a project open first so we have something to tell Bridge where to export to. So I have here just a basic default Unreal Engine 4 project. And if we were to open Bridge back up, from here all we have to do now is just select Export. And you can see that it is currently exporting to Unreal Engine. Export successful. And now if we were to go back to Unreal Engine, we can see that the asset has been imported into our project library here. And now let's just drag the model here onto our scene. And as you can see, it has imported quite successfully. Let's go back to Bridge for a second here. And then let's just go ahead and make the window of Bridge a tad bit smaller so that we can see it on top of UE4 here. And let's scroll down under those similar assets that we selected earlier and find something else that we can import really quick. How about this Mossy Mounds? We're going to select the download icon in the top right. And then all we have to do this time, since we adjusted our global export settings, is select the export icon in the top right of the asset. 
And just like that, with one click, it has added the Mossy Mounds also to our project location here. So let's go ahead and drag and drop this back into our scene. And we now have both assets in our Unreal Engine 4 project. So the process of quickly exporting an asset from the Megaskins library and bridge to Unreal Engine 4 is the same one-click process to any of the plugin integrations that we have that ships with bridge. Just make sure that you know what default engine you are exporting to that we specified in the very beginning of this tutorial by going up to edit, settings, and right here under the engine specification. That is going to be your default export for anything that you click export to, aside from the export settings that you establish here on an individual asset. Well, there you have it everyone. We have learned how to view all of our content in the new Bridge 2020. From the library windows to filtering our assets with smart searching to previewing our assets to make sure they're exactly what we want and how to export those assets to Unreal Engine 4 using Bridges integration system, we have covered a lot today. If you feel like learning more about Bridge, don't forget to tune in on this Friday's live stream where I'll be sure to answer all your questions. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.